Cassie from Southern California. Cassie, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Hi, I actually had questions to ask. Um... jurisdictional hearing to only hear CPS's side? No, that's not normal. Unless, you know, your attorney said, I don't have any evidence to provide. I gave my attorney a lot of evidence, but she told me that she wasn't going to provide any of it until the dispositional hearing. Mm, that sounds like a uh, unusual strategy play. It might work. It may not. I don't know. Well, the the judge actually rules um, the allegations, even though some of them aren't accurate or true, mm -hmm. in CPS's favor. And I told my attorney, I said, hey, they're only seeing one side. They're not seeing our side at all. And she's all, this is normal. What's, they what? only usually see CPS's side in my county. Hmm. Well, you know, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I hate to hear something like that. Uh, it would seem that if you put on evidence that, you know, most judges that I've appeared in front of them, will, you know, consider all the evidence. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, I'm going to win, you know, but at least they hear the evidence, right? But if your, attorney yeah, if your attorney didn't put forth any evidence at the jurisdictional uh, hearing, that's an unusual strategy. I can't say that that's a bad strategy because I don't know enough about your case, but I hope you have a lot of good evidence for the dispositional hearing. Yeah, I do. And then the social worker lied in the report. Too, and she lied to me as well. She actually uh, told me that my daughter's diaper rash that I complained about for two weeks of the visitation um, had gone away and cleared up. Mm -hmm. And my daughter was taken to the doctor the day after she told me it was cleared up and was um, told that in, in the doctor's note, she got prescribed medication for the diaper rash. Yeah. You know, let me tell you this. There, there's a, a lot of good foster parents. A lot of bad foster parents. There's a problem with foster care that a lot of us want to ignore. You know, foster care took up the place of the orphanage system. And there's there's always going to be a problem when you ask a person to take care of a child that's not theirs. You know, yes. they're not even family. And you well, know the problem um, is, is they're not letting me go to the doctor's appointments. They're trying to say COVID nineteen is a hindrance and I can't attend because of COVID nineteen. Now, you know, I don't get into those medical issues, but that doesn't sound it sounds like an excuse that they just don't want you there. I mean you could appear at the doctor's appointment via Zoom. Via FaceTime. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I said. And she said that um because, oh, and that's the other thing that they're saying is um, they stopped visitations with me and my husband because of COVID-19. Right. There was a special rule that came out um, in California. Or, yeah, you're in California. They came out in California that said, you know, uh, COVID doesn't stop visits. You know, they have to give you your visits because visitation is a very important part of these juvenile cases. It allows you to keep that relationship going with the child. Yeah, so, well, my county canceled them, and my judge said yesterday that the in-persons are um, canceled as well when she said it. I, I don't get it. Like, she wouldn't hear us out. She wouldn't hear our side. And I told my attorney, I was like, why isn't she hearing our side? And she said that, um, I was like, the allegations are being sustained against us, and she hasn't even heard our evidence or our side or what we have to say about it. And know, she said that that's how things go in Sutter County. That's CPS always wins, and... Um, there's you know, only one case, and I told her, why haven't you complained to the Judicial Board of Commissioners yet, then, if this is how it always goes? This is unfair. So, you know, um, there is a, a woman on my, who is currently watching, I think, this show on Facebook Live, and she is a client, and she had done a lot of research about visitation and COVID, you know, the COVID uh, pandemic, and what I would suggest is after the show, you go to the Facebook live tape of the show and post, you know, does anybody know anything about COVID visitation? She had gotten a lot of, done a lot of research, found a lot of, you know, documents on it. The problem is, is that we keep making or the government keeps making new rules. 
So, you know, Governor Newsom came out with new rules. I don't know if that affects the visitation issue, you know, in some counties right now. So that's one of the things you'd have to look for your county uh, when you uh, do this research or talk to your attorney. Definitely talk to your attorney and find out if he or she can assist you in any way. Yeah, and then I was wondering, after allegations are sustained, how can you go about getting them changed? Well, you can't go about getting them changed. Those are factual findings by the judge. What you can do is, even if allegations are true, you can still get your children back at the disposition hearing because it's a whole different legal standard. You know, it's uh, the test is you have to be proven to be a substantial danger uh, to each child, not just danger, right? Not risk, but you have to be a substantial danger to the child. There has to be less restrictive alternatives, and all of this has to be proven by the social worker by clear and convincing evidence. Um, what, um, what I'm confused about is, so we can't do anything about the allegations that were sustained, even though it was one-sided? There's nothing we can do? Well, you can appeal it after the disposition hearing. After the disposition hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if the judge, what's substantiated evidence? Um, that means, generally, that means the, the judge has found it to be true. Okay. So um, to get them here, um, to get them home, what does CBS have to prove to keep my kids away from us? Well, I just told you, by clear and convincing evidence that you're a substantial danger to the child, each child, and there are no less restrictive alternatives. I mean, and and I, you know, I parents, would like, go ahead. parents lose that hearing a, a lot, but I'm not sure that the legislature intended for them to lose as much as they do because to prove that you're, by clear and convincing evidence, that you're a substantial danger to someone, I mean, that's a pretty big deal, right? That's a big deal. Yes. And to prove that there is no less restrictive alternatives. I mean, you know, people rarely bring that up. Rarely bring it up. So that's something then, that I would talk I, to my attorney about. Go ahead, Cynthia. I would like to um, just remind people something that you have taught me is don't sit and worry about the allegations at the moment. Worry about where you are now. Because sometimes you can't go back and change what has already been said or done. Uh, and you can do that later, but let's worry about just getting your kids home. Right. You're doing totally the work. Right. I guess but uh, as a parent who went through it, I understand the focus. And when somebody's talking crap about you, you want to you wanna set it straight. I understand. Yes. And I guess my biggest question is, is... Um, why doesn't CPS care about how the children feel? I mean, they see how my kids are with us, and they know how because, much they love us. Be, because kids always want to be with their parents, and they and CPS can easily say that you know there's studies that show children will always want to go back to the abuser, which is the parent. So, unfortunately, that's something I wish would also be heard. I think it um, depends on their age and their. A bill. I don't know, Vince, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I do know that depending on what the allegations are, you know, children want to be with their parents and they're not able to determine what is a good and safe position for them. And that's what CPS's job is supposed to be. No, I agree with you, Cynthia. Cassie, you know, um, just because a child wants to return to you under the law, okay, we're just talking about the law, that's not the only factor the judge has to consider. Okay. okay. I have seen cases where in my own mind, if I were the judge, I wouldn't return a child to a, a certain parent, even though the child wanted to return home. Now, there's not many of those in my experience, but I have seen it. Okay. And I guess um, another question is, is, is it, was it legal for the foster parents to put our children in preschool without our consent and knowledge? Um, was it was it legal? Probably not, because you still have educational rights. You, I'm I'm guessing you still have educational rights, but and there hasn't even been a disposition hearing yet. So, what I would do is I talk to your uh, lawyer about that. Yeah, I did. She said that she doesn't seem too concerned about the things that they keep doing. Um, I I don't know. She's pretty she's pretty set on CPS always wins. Well. 
I don't know how to. Yeah, I'm to sorry. She, I'm sorry she doesn't have that mindset because if you're going to beat CPS in any county in California or anywhere in you know the country, you got to have the mindset that you're going to win. That's yeah, just my, my. That's my humble my, opinion. That's just my humble opinion. My husband's attorney said that the CPS worker definitely jumped to the detainment of our children. She said that she did, he, our, the person that detained our kids did not take any steps. Is that um, normal? Um, no, it's not normal. And it's not, the, you, law. It's not the law. But you're past that. Cassie, you're past that. You're at the disposition hearing. Let's not talk about the jurisdictional hearing. Let's not talk about detention. Let's focus on, detention, on the jurisdi- uh, dispositional hearing. And let's focus on getting the children back. After the dispositional hearing, you can talk about all this other stuff if you want to make a complaint, if you want to sue them, you know, if you want to do anything like that. But right now, I think you should be focused on what you need to do to get the children back. And that's going to take you meeting with your uh, attorney, coming up with a strategy regarding witnesses, exhibits, implementing that strategy, and then going from there. Because in in my opinion, it's hard to win. It's hard for CPS to win a dispositional hearing just because of the legal huh. standard. Hey, Cindy. I've been in parenting classes. I've completed three in the last three months. I've completed three parenting classes, and I've also been in therapy for two and a half years. And on top of that, um, well, CPS has been trying to say that I'm mentally unstable for the last two years, but they don't have any proof. They've gotten no proof from my therapist or the psychiatrist that I'm mentally unsound. In fact, They've gotten the opposite of what they've been trying to tell the judge. Right. Well, that, you, uh, know, you know, the evidence you have is plain to you. It's not plain to CPS. And they will argue and present evidence wherever they can to win this case to keep your kids out of your custody. So focus right. on the disposition here in Cassie. Cassie, we have to take a break right now, but I want to thank you for listening and thank you for calling in and sharing. We'll be right back with more calls and more questions. Thank you.